progenitor cells are, are busy cells. Progenitor cells for the nervous system are busy. They're in the central nervous system alone, we're not even going to talk about the peripheral nervous system in this regard, but in the central nervous system alone, we're looking at trying to get 170 billion cells made. And so there has to be a lot of division. And this happens uh, because progenitor cells have two ways of dividing. In one way, which happens a lot early on, they, make a, they have a symmetric division so that they form two more progenitor cells. In a, the other type of division for a progenitor cell is asymmetric, where one progenitor cell is born and one terminally differentiated neuron or glial cell is born. So these divisions, the, these are divisions of very potent cells. Now, if you looked at an egg, it would be called pluripotent. It can become anything. But the progenitor cells in the nervous system are multipotent. They can't become a kidney cell, and they can't become a lung cell. They can become a neuron or a glial cell. That's what they've got available, or another progenitor cell. So, uh, so we've, we've limited the, the uh, we've narrowed the possibilities. These are types of stem cells, but they are limited. They are not uh, omnipotent, they are not pluripotent as it's called, but they are multipotent. They become neurons or glial cells. Now, the rodent, in the adult rodent, the adult rat or mouse, there are a lot of these pluripotent cells. So if there's injury, you can get new neurons. In the adult human, there are a very small number there are two sources of pluripotent cells. One is in the dentate gyrus, and the other is in this subventricular zone, which migrates out into the olfactory bulbs. The ro that rostral stream is dried up in the adult human. There are uh, pluripotent cells, progenitor cells, in, that can make neurons in the dentate gyrus. But for the most part, if you lose neurons, you cannot replace them as an adult human. You might be able to replace some of them if you were an adult rat or mouse, but if you're an adult human, you are not going to get neurons back. You're not gonna be able to replenish the number of neurons um, if, once they're, they're uh, gone. Now, there are progenitor cells that can still make glia, so we can make new glia as adult humans. And that's very important when we have um, diseases such as multiple sclerosis, which is demyelinating. There might be, uh, demyelination can happen for a variety of reasons, but if it happens because of a problem with oligodendrocyte, you might be able to get back some oligodendrocytes because of this ability to replenish um, glial cells that is, is uh, greater than our, our inability to replenish neurons. Now, I talk about the adult. There is, there is a, uh, a human that has a lot of uh, progenitor cells, and that is a human that's below the age of about five years old. And where are these progenitor cells? They're back in the hindbrain. They're making this structure here. This structure, the cerebellum, part of the hindbrain, develops from a place called the rhombic lip. And Roughly half of the neurons in the central nervous system, so around 40-some billion, are contained within the cerebellum. This is chock full with, the, with one type of cell that makes up about half of all the cells in the brain, all the neurons in the brain. These cells are only starting to populate the cerebellum at the time of birth, and they continue to divide. And this will become, late, this will become important later when we talk about types of brain tumors. OK. Now, lately, the political and ethical debates over stem cells have diminished a bit, and in part, that the, the, um, the, the temperature in those discussions has lessened because we have a, a different alternative available now. 
And these are called induced pluripotent cells. These induced pluripotent cells are an incredibly exciting development where you can take simply skin cells or, or some epithelial cell from a person, take that at, take a biopsy, so you take out those cells from the person, put it into a dish, put on specific what are called transcription factors to get that cell, that terminally differentiated cell, skin cell, to de-differentiate, go back to egg land, okay? Become a pluripotent cell. And then you put on a different set of transcription factors and bring that pluripotent cell up to become a neuron. Now imagine if you can do this for an individual who has, say, an inherited form of Parkinson's disease. So now you know what is, what's the mutation uh, in this person's, uh, that is causing this person's disease. Not only can you figure out what the individual's uh, genetic error is, but you can throw drugs at these cells that are going to be just analogous to the cells that the person actually has in their body. So that enables you now to test out drugs, see are they likely to work in this individual or not. And this is a really, really exciting area of research um, and an exciting uh, possibility for, for greater uh, and improved clinical care in the future. Great. So now we're going to talk about, um, we're going to delve into the difference between a peripheral neuron and a, and a central neuron.